Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. That is why we pray that there will be men who are on fire for Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, but filled with superior wisdom, that God will lift them, are we together, to be captains of industry, that a time will come in this nation, it is the church who will determine political leaders, the church who will determine economic leaders, but it's not just to shout amen, we will keep saying amen and remain low because it will take contribution. Contribution is what legitimizes the door of greatness to open for you not sentiments contribution how many believers have been given projects construction projects they are on fire but they did a bad job because they will not train themselves and hide under the fact that remember we are believers i believe in spirituality but i believe in excellence that you deliver at a level that defies any that anybody who wants to speak against you if we had time to read Daniel chapter 6 you will see that by reason of his being exalted as one of the presidents there were a few people who were angry and the Bible says they came to check him using the basis of incompetence and they found him upright there was nothing they could get so they had to go to the issue of prayer the goal was to trap Daniel, but he was not only spiritual, he was so exceptional in his duty. Hallelujah. Value and contribution. As a man of God, the pulpit should not, only be, should not be your only jurisdiction of dominion. If business people gather and you are to speak to them, do you have something to tell them? If diplomats gather together and they say, please, just a 10 minutes charge, just to encourage them. Do you have what to tell them? Make up your mind to be competent. It's a decision I made with myself and I have challenged people. And you see, when you make up your mind to be competent, God will send those who need that kind of thing to you. Look at the men of David. Those who were distressed, those who were in debt, those who were confused, David turned them into mighty men. Not just mighty men in terms of the spiritual context, they were warriors with honor. The Bible says one of them stood in the same position and held a knife and brought down 800 people. And even when he, he released the knife, it refused to leave his hand. It will not leave his hand. That is a level of mastery. Koinonia, please hear me. In the name of Jesus, in the area where God would want you to serve his purposes, go for knowledge, go for knowledge. Humble yourself and learn, challenge yourself. If you are in the banking sector, be the best, be exceptional. I told you, you don't stop till you serve kings. You own a restaurant, let it be the best. You are a politician, rise to the highest level that within your time of politics, you bring great honor to the name of the Lord. Developmental projects that it does not have to be whether you are a Christian or Muslim or anything in between, that everybody can see and attest to the fact that this governor, this president, this minister, this board member, unbelievers can come unanimously and say sincerely if it is in terms of competence let's throw away this this person can deliver until we get to that point we will keep flattering ourselves with religious sentiments and it will not work our priesthood will prepare the heavens to favor us listen it is your assignment to be valuable and competent. It is God's assignment to connect you to those who need it can, and reward it. Are we together now? You have to understand how it works. It was Daniel's assignment to be competent. It was God's assignment to connect him to the king through his wife. It was Joseph's assignment to be competent. It was God's assignment to give the dream. The spiritual advantage will be wasted if you are not prepared. It is often said that favor is when preparation meets opportunity. There are many preachers who love Jesus, but they are not ready to speak to a global audience. 
they are not ready to speak to intelligent people they are not ready to communicate the truth of the kingdom with wisdom and exactitude because we have not worked on ourselves we have prayed but we have not built ourselves it takes more than just prayer and bible study let me tell you you, to be able to build a ministry that flourishes there are many other components to be able to communicate to people people are not stupid they will not just come and listen to nonsense you must be thoroughly furnished like a reed that has been taken out of fire so you are speaking and a CEO is listening to you a prayer warrior is listening to you are we together and even those who are not born again as let me tell you this without any sense of pride there are many many muslims and unbelievers right now who are connecting and listening to me they are listening with their heart open because even though they may not believe in jesus but there is a dimension of the truth that is life applicable they can use it for their businesses and come back with results at least they are coming close to the gates of the kingdom refuse to be incompetent and don't give any excuses for it they send you to deliver a speech to a board do your homework wake up in the night cross the t's and dot the i's you are human but you can be human to an extent that you are almost godlike competence is a possibility in the world of men let's stop giving flimsy excuses you are a leader nobody will follow you just for sentiments tribal sentiments sentiments of regions you must be competent to deliver people want to be proud of their leaders they can stand and say this is my pastor this is my man of god not bringing rubbish and commanding loyalty it will not work that way i love you or that's why i'm pounding on you we'll soon reconcile but for this one just get it into your spirit you will thank me for it superior dimensions in life and destiny access to the ears of kings and nations no it will not just come by priesthood alone in addition to priesthood a rich qualitative spiritual life there must be substance that you can deliver amen 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 I'm saying amen to what I've told you. That's my song. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. One more time. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Price number five, we're wrapping up. The price of strategic connections. What does it take to scale new heights in the spirit and in destiny? Price number five, the price of strategic connections. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please, from verse 9 and 10. It says, two are better than one. Two are better than one. Why? They have a good reward for their labor. That means your productivity is multiplied to the degree to which you are connected. Verse 10. It says, for if one fall, the other one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he had not another to help him. Listen, there are many kinds of connections in your life. But there are strategic connections that define your life. I'm going to give you two of them very quickly. Number one is Nehemiah chapter 2. The first 11 verses will not read everything. The Bible talks about Nehemiah who was the cup bearer of the king. Artaxerxes, that kind of name. I don't know why he didn't give us a shorter name. I will call him the king of Persia so that I can have my peace to preach. Are we together? <laughs> And it came to pass in the month Nisan, the 20th year, remember our king again, the king of Persia, that wine was found before him. And I took up the wine, I gave it to the king. Now, I had not been before time sad in his presence. Nehemiah is speaking now. He says, when the king saw his countenance, he said, Nehemiah, why are you sick? And I, I mean, why are you sorrowful? I know you are not sick. That means Nehemiah was a faithful cup bearer. Notice the transition from a cup bearer 
to the one who will now build the Jerusalem wall. He looked at the king and he, the king loved him so much. Verse 3. Just give us the verses. I can read or explain whichever. It says, why should my countenance not fall when I am here and the place of my father's sepulchers? In other words, I am here and the Jerusalem wall has not been built. Let's go to verse 4. The king said, so what is your request now? Everybody says strategic connections. When you are connected to the king, it's easy for some things to happen fast. Strategic connections. The king said, so what should I do now? He said, I pray to the God of heaven, verse 5. The king said, if it, or he said, if it please the king, and if your servant has found favor in thy sight, send me now to Judah and to the city of my father's sepulchers that I may build it, 6. And the king said unto me, the queen was sitting by him, for how long will your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send him. Watch what the king did. I want to show you the power of strategic connections. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given to me, to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over. That means guarantee my safety and support me. Instead of meeting all the governors one by one, I met the king who has influence over them. And I said, king, give me a letter. Are we together? Verse 8. And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gate of the palace, right? And the wall of the city for the house that I may enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of God upon me. Verse 9. It says, then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and the horsemen with me. Say strategic connections. That guy would have died in the forest. He would have died in several places. He knew all the people he would have to meet one by one. And he said, King, you have influence. If I have a relationship with you, all I need is a letter. And look at how the man jumped it. He said, get on my chariot. He sent him with chariot. So every time they saw him, ah, from the king, yes, sir, please pass. Strategic relationships can shorten the time of your arrival to the next level. There are many of us who are meeting people one by one and meeting gates and systems one by one. We need to pray and say, Lord, in addition to those you have connected with me with, bring me to a point where I am connected to kings and gatekeepers. In one day, they will open a door for you that may take others 10 years. Are we together? Generally, relationships are profitable. But believe me, to rise to certain levels in life, there are certain strategic connections that will be needed in your life. They will redefine everything about your life. Second Kings chapter 5, let's read from verse 1. The Bible talks about a man called Naaman of the, the, the host, the, the, the king of Syria. He said he was a great man with his master. He was honorable because by him, Deliverance had come to Syria. The Bible says he was a mighty man, but he was leprous. Let's go to verse 2. The Syrians came and they captured Israel, and then a little girl was captured also who waited on Naaman's wife. Verse 3 now. I want to show you something there. She said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet in Samaria, for he would recover you. Are we together? Four. So... He went in and told the Lord, toss and toss, this is what has happened. Let's go to verse 5. The king of Syria said, go. You see the letter again. Is it in your Bible? Now, this is a story. The little girl is saying, my Lord or my master or my boss, there is a prophet, a mighty prophet. If you go to that prophet in Israel, he can cure you of this. But I don't think you have the kind of influence to meet that prophet because he's a great prophet. And immediately, Naaman would have gone and said, I'm a captain of the army. He would have been surprised. You see the way Elisha treated him. He didn't even come out. Elisha was not a small man. The prophets ordained the kings. So these guys were, they had their own pride and pedigree too, unfortunately. Are we together? 
Now watch what he did. To save him the burden of negotiations and all of this, this is the wisdom of the cosmos that believers must learn. The king of Syria said, go, I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and he took him all of those gifts. Verse 6. He brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, now when this letter is come to you, behold, I have herewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. The remaining is history down to verse 11. Look at how easy it became for the king to be healed, for Naaman to be healed, because he had the endorsement of a great man's relationship. He went to the king, and when the king was downcast, the news reached Elisha quickly, and Elisha said, don't worry, send him to me, and he will know there is a prophet in Israel. To cut the long story short, the man was healed. Could it be that many things that look hard in your life now is because the relationship that has the power and the influence and the capacity to accelerate it has not come. The price for greater dimensions is the price of strategic connections. Strategic connections. Let me tell you the truth. It is a good thing for God to give you influence and access to the hearts of kings because it will accelerate your journey economically and otherwise. There are people who are heavily defended and blessed. There are people who are heavily protected and supported because there are kings, there are captains who love them. There are men of God in this nation, men of God in Africa, who is not just the pulpit that is protecting them. God in heaven is there to defend them, but they, are, they have the jealousy and the loyalty of kings across the globe. Nations will close and open again for their sake. Are we learning? Let me give us the last one so we pray. I missed out on the story of the Shunammite woman. There's no time for that. We would have spoken about the Shunammite woman. The same Elisha who came to her and said, what should I do for you? Notice the woman. When she saw Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4, you find that from verse 8 to 17. When she saw Elisha, she discerned that this was a great man of God. Immediately, she started preparing something to honor him. And Elisha came after a while and said, you've been helping me. What should I do? Should I speak to the king for you? He had that authority. King, help this woman. And that would have been it. Listen, not everybody is limited. This is a very, very sincere statement. Challenges are not general. They are limited. As much as people are suffering, there are people who with the same letter, that letter principle is still working till today in Nigeria and across the globe. There are people who may be ordinary people, but they will carry letters from superior voices with authorities and can take and say, listen, um, I just came to you. Who are you? I came with a letter. From who? So, 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 ah, okay. Where do you know him? He happens to be my uncle or he happens to be someone God brought to my life. Are you sure? Let me see. Help this person, please. Give him all the support needed. Sign. We'll talk later. That's the end of it. So what are you looking for? I've applied visa time, 10 times. It has not worked. Okay, come back tomorrow. Drop your passport. Go. That's the end of it. Or, okay, there's a job given there, but I don't have a scholarship uh, for the master's program, but it's too late. We've closed the door. Well, so so, so person said I should give you. Please help him. We'll talk about your wife's issue tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody, including the king, has his area of need. The person who can solve the king's problem, are we together, can get the king's favor too, for himself and for others. Kings have problems. They can solve the problems of others, but there are others who can solve their problems. You need both in your life. The kings who can solve your problems and access to the ones who solve the problem of kings. The last one and we pray. Did someone get blessed in church today? So that by the time you are sharing the grace, you, it's a wiser version of you that now lives. You know what to look for. You know what to pray for. Your prayer life now is on fire. Your word life, your passion for God, but you can see the missing links. Ah, this is why my life has clamped down in one place. Are you ready for number what now? 
number six the price of humility this is the last price you want to rise to a higher level the price of humility james 4 verse 6 james 4 verse 6 pay attention as we wrap up but he giveth more grace wherefore he saith, god resisted the proud is that in your bible but giveth grace to the humble please give us um write for reference we may not read it but just write daniel chapter 5 from verse 18 to 31 this was daniel speaking to belshazzar about nebuchadnezzar and his pride he said your father fell because of pride he exalted himself more than the king of heaven and he fell and you now his son you are following the same step what happened to your father will happen to you and he died and darius took over in james chapter 4 and verse 10 the bible tells us powerfully the blessedness of humility james 4 10 humble yourselves in the sight of the lord and he shall lift you up this is a principle that i've learned for my own life i've learned it by the privilege of relationship with the fathers of faith in this nation not just in terms of the spiritual dimensions even in in several areas you know great people largely by the extent of pride and humility they are truly very humble people they will learn and learn again and learn from anybody you can see somebody, you study some of these intellectuals abroad. You can see somebody who is a professor par excellence, listening to a little child talking to him. And you'll be saying, Professor, this and that, you are wrong. And you say, Oh, really? Not, I'm wrong. You will meet me at the class. No. <laughs> you will tell him, I'm wrong. And this is somebody who is a learned fellow. And he will listen and learn. The same thing you see with very prosperous people. And I pray that this will become a culture in our hearts that as we rise, we will remain ever humble. God, you are the reason for all that I am. You are the reason for all that I have. Even though the nations praise you, uh, your workings in my life, I acknowledge before you and before them that I am nothing before you. And God will measure a thousand cubits for you. You are ready to go higher. Pride is a killer, my precious people pride destroys and as we prepare to pray i want us to start with this prayer over pride there are some of us who pride has brought us to positions of shame and reproach right now we are shadows of ourselves because we became full of ourselves to acknowledge the god of heaven as the basis for all that you are and all that you have is true humility are we together to remain ever humble before him it is my prayer for myself. It is my prayer for this great ministry. It is my prayer for the body of Christ. It is my prayer for you and everybody who I truly love and care for. That humility will be a signature in your life. That when people look at you and say, why are you humble when everything is working in your life? Left, right and center, you have seen the faithfulness of God. You will tell them that it's not just something I do mechanically. It is a revelation. It sustains the key to my next level. Pride is a demoter. It will demote you regardless the position. Humility is a promoter. It will lift you beyond this level. I have handed to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, people of God, six keys. That if you walk in keeping with these keys, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of Scripture. You will watch your life move from one level to the other. First in your spiritual triumph and then your destiny adventure and then every aspect of your life. These are the keys that the great have traded with that have brought them to where they are and continues to take them to levels, virgin dimensions in the spirit, virgin dimensions in destiny. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. Let me wrap up again with Proverbs chapter 4. It says, the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Please rise upon your feet. Please rise upon your feet. We are going to pray.
prayer point number one just two prayer points for tonight prayer point number one you are going to ask the God of heaven that this this that was listed the six keys that represent the price for new and superior dimensions that the grace be given to you from heaven to walk in keeping with every one of these go ahead and lift your voice and pray the Bible says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them is someone praying I obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ I obtain grace by the power of the Holy Spirit I obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ the price of a deeper experience with God the price of unbending focus the price of greater enlightenment the price of greater contribution and productivity the price of strategic connections and finally the price of humility go ahead and pray father I obtain grace I am set for the new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ I am set for a new level in my faith adventure a new level in my destiny a new level in the spirit final prayer point in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit acceleration to my destiny even for the next level go ahead and pray spiritual acceleration financial acceleration in the name of Jesus Lord bring me speedily satisfy me early even with your mercy greater levels of power greater levels of illumination greater levels in ministry greater levels in every area of my life I will excel in my priesthood I will excel as far as dominion is concerned wisdom to operate in the cosmos in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ before I speak over your life to wrap up tonight's meeting let me make an altar call one of the greatest index to measure the success of any man of God and any ministry is the souls that come directly through your preaching to Jesus Christ soul winning in order of priority second only to your work with God is the greatest index for measuring ministerial success no matter what you have and do if souls do not come to Jesus even if it is one soul on account of the truths that you communicate then you have not done justice let's minimize movement I want to make an altar call there are people here from the start when I gave the first key and the first price the price of a deeper walk with God the Holy Spirit convicted you immediately this is you he's talking about I sent you to church tonight for this reason and to hear this you are saying apostle I truly need to make my way right with Jesus Christ perhaps you have never truly been saved you came here by invitation or you have been here watching others saved and it has not really dawned on you that you should make that decision tonight is your chance and then for those who are saying apostle I want to rededicate my life I cannot truly say that my work with God is rich enough I know that I have veered off and I need restoration we have just one minute for you wherever you are I want you to leave your seat and quickly come and stand right here quickly come and stand let's celebrate them as they come don't be afraid don't be ashamed Jesus is calling on you wherever you are keep clapping as they come God bless you keep clapping as they come God bless you God bless you God bless you you are outside you're up the balcony all of the overflows and you are following at home watching by way of television or a rebroadcast it is never too late to make up your mind for Jesus koinonia is this the best you can do let's encourage them as they come young and old alike Jesus is calling you Jesus is calling you
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. If you are still joining them, please join them quickly. I want to lead you to pray the salvation prayer. The Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made even unto salvation. Thank you so much for the courage. Thank you for coming to stand boldly before Jesus and even before his people. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. And all of you who are out in front of your LED screens and someone who is watching from your home, you're watching by way of television, congratulations for your determination to make this decision. As I pray with them, I want you to pray and follow through with the prayer. I only ask that you do it believing that Jesus is listening to you and that this decision will translate into a new life. For all of you who are in front, may I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say this loud and clear. Please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart and I desire to walk with you and to live for you. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, as my Savior, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. Right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit, and I declare that I'm a child of God. I go for whatever and backward never in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted father thank you for this ones they have made these declarations of faith and I decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight we declare that you belong to the family of faith you are recipients of eternal life. You begin a walk with God that will translate into an excellent life here on earth and even after in the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven and I declare for you that you begin a new walk with the Lord full of testimonies, full of blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for this bold decision. Let me request that you move to my right and... Um, our counselors will be there to have a word with you very quickly. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate them as they go. Thank you. Keep clapping until they leave. God bless you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I declare over your life, this week beginning for you will be a week full of testimonies as you put that which you have heard to practice in the name of jesus i pray that god who is a lifter of men will lift you to new and strange dimensions i declare over you if you came to church tonight with anything that is an issue of concern in the name of jesus the son of the living god it drops right now I declare that you walk in liberty. I declare that you walk in favor. I pray for your spiritual life tonight. If there is anything that is fighting your prayer life, fighting your word study life, fighting your passion and your commitment for spiritual things, let it fall off like Dagon before the ark. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. You will find access to information materials that will grant you superior understanding in the name of Jesus and for those of you who came here trusting God to visit you and open doors for you in one area or the other I declare the doors open now I place a mark upon you and I call it the mark of exemption I place a mark upon you and I call it a mark of favor I place a mark upon you in the name of Jesus may you find help in the mighty name of Jesus you will not die you have no covenant with the grave in the name of Jesus and they that have been anointed and appointed to hold your hands and help you in the name of Jesus Christ I engage their ministry over your life in the mighty name of Jesus 
if you came here with any burden any concern maybe a financial burden bills on your neck there's something that is taking away your joy like nehemiah i stand representing the king of kings and i decree and declare the same way the king granted nehemiah favor in the name of jesus heaven is smiling upon you with answers for in jesus name we pray Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.